So, little Sally, I hear you've been having some trouble in school. I want to do well, but I just can't. Why is that, Sally? Will you tell me what's going on at school? I try to pay attention, but I end up daydreaming through all my classes and forgetting to listen to the teacher. My teacher says my desk is messy and I need to organize. Maybe I do because I can never find my homework. It doesn't matter, though, because I never get good grades anyway. It's not that I can't understand what's going on. It just takes too long, and I don't like sitting for long periods of time. I try tapping my foot or singing a song or even taking five-minute breaks, but nothing helps. This has been going on for as long as I can remember. I want to do better on my tests and my homework, but I don't know how. I used to be the best student and get the best grades. Everyone would come to me for math and spelling homework. But now I'm barely passing my classes, and no one in my class will talk to me. Talk to me a bit more about how these people in your classes won't talk to you. What do you mean by that? I used to have a few friends, but they stopped talking to me sometime in elementary school. Since then, I've spent a lot more time on my own. It's not for lack of trying. I always go up to the kids since in my classes and try to talk to them, but no one ever seems interested. They either brush me off or call me weird. I just can't seem to connect with anyone. Can you help me talk? Well, Sally, it sounds like you might have ADHD. It seems like you're having trouble paying attention and sitting still. This means you may have a combination of what we like to call combined inattentive and hyperactive impulsive type ADHD. There is no one test that can diagnose you with ADHD. Researchers are working on several methods for diagnosing ADHD like CAT scans, MRIs, EEGs, blood and computer screenings. Unfortunately for you, these tests aren't ready to use in a clinical setting. This means that our diagnosis process for ADHD is based on the symptoms you're presenting with and ruling out other problems that could be causing your symptoms. It sounds like you've been having some of these problems for a while. About how old were you when your grades started dropping and it became harder to make friends? My grades started to drop in fourth grade when I was about nine years old, and I was about 10 or 11 when I stopped having close friends. This is not uncommon for people with ADHD. Usually symptoms start before the age of 12, even if those symptoms aren't bad enough for a diagnosis. Have you had any trouble at home? Sometimes my parents are really understanding and patient with me. They help me with my homework, but I can tell they get really frustrated sometimes and that can cause fights. Well, it's very common for ADHD to affect multiple parts of someone's life, like school, social life, and home life. It seems like most of your trouble happens at school or around your peers. But that, understandably, puts a lot of pressure on you and your parents at home. The main criteria for diagnosing ADHD are at least six symptoms, symptoms appear before the age of 12, the symptoms are detrimental in your life, and they last for at least six months. Since you fit all of these criteria, it's quite likely that you have ADHD. But to play it safe, there are several other conditions I want to rule out. Do you get along with your teachers? Not really. Sometimes they get mad at me for not paying attention, and I get mad back because I'm, it's not like I'm not trying to listen. What about your emotions? Do you have any mood swings or troubles with anxiety? I get frustrated a lot, and that makes me angry. Other than that, no. Okay, that likely rules out anxiety or mood disorders, as well as uh, oppositional defiance disorder. But there are still a few more things we have to check out. What is oppositional defiance disorder? Oppositional defiance disorder is diagnosed based on sim symptomography similar to ADHD, but unlike people with ADHD, people with oppositional defiance disorder tend to enjoy angering or annoying others. They also tend to show hostility towards adults and authority figures. Since you haven't told me anything that would suggest any of these symptoms, it's highly unlikely you have oppositional defiance disorder. Some of these conditions will require you seeing other doctors so you won't get an official diagnosis until our follow-up appointment. First, I want to make sure you don't have a learning disorder. This can be diagnosed by a learning specialist through IQ and academic achievement testing. Second, a language disorder, which requires the evaluation of a learning clinician. Once you get results back from these specialists, we can get you an official diagnosis and develop a treatment plan. Do you have any questions for me? So, my symptoms are all caused by things going on inside my brain? Well, environmental factors can also have effects on the symptoms of ADHD. Um, traits like impulsiveness and hyperactivity have often been observed in children whose mothers drank alcohol while they were pregnant. Mothers who smoke when they are pregnant often have children with a higher likelihood of having ADHD. This may be caused by a disruption of the nicotinic receptors in the brain. Postnatal risk factors for ADHD include low birth weight, malnutrition, a lack of social, and a lack of social interaction. 
Having a lack of fatty omega-3 and omega-6 acids, as well as iron deficiencies, have also been found to contribute to this disorder. Hey Sally, great to see you. I talked with your other doctors and they have no evidence of any other disorders and we agree, you have ADHD. Thank you for explaining all this to me, Doc, but I'm so confused about what's different between my brain and everyone else's brain. Well, Sally, parts of your brain called the prefrontal cortex, basal ganglia, dorsal anterior cingulate, cortex, corpus callosum, and the cerebellum are shown to have a lower volume than in the brains of non-ADHD patients. Children with ADHD can be as far as three years behind other children in terms of brain development. Dopamine is the most important neurotransmitter associated with ADHD. Dopamine is formed in the brain using materials that are acquired through the diet. These materials are then transformed by a series of enzymes into the neurotransmitters released in the brain. Neurotransmitters are chemicals that carry signals from neuron to neuron. Neurotransmitters can move between these cells. Disruptions in this process can be a causal factor in ADHD. These disruptions usually occur in the metacortical dopamine pathway. This pathway plays an important role in mediating appropriate behavior as well as the ability to suppress distractions. That is one of the reasons you are having symptoms we're talking about. This pathway's activity can be increased with certain drugs, but there are risks involved. These drugs also affect the uh, mesolimbic dopamine pathway, an unintentional side effect of which can be addiction. Now that I understand what ADHD is, what are the treatments for it? Unfortunately, there are no cures for ADHD. However, there are some treatment options. The options include structured classroom management, tutoring, behavioral therapy, and drug interventions. Research shows that medications can be 70 to 95% effective, so I think this is the best option for you. The most common drug interventions for ADHD are stimulants and antidepressants. These medications correct the dopamine deficiency and deal with associated symptoms like anxiety, depression, and aggression. The main focus of these drugs is not to cure ADHD, but to help cope with the symptoms. Stimulants are most commonly prescribed for ADHD. Stimulants work on the central nervous system by blocking the reuptake or reabsorption of dopamine by neurons. Normal release stimulants work very quickly, taking effect within 20 minutes and lasting three to four hours. Extended release stimulants and pills of medication coated with different time release substances to cause the medication to dissolve hourly across eight to 12 hour periods. Not enough research has been done to determine how effective this new method of extended time release medication is, but it is another option. Although a, symptoms of ADHD, a symptom of ADHD is hyperactivity, as I explained before, ADHD results from lower levels of brain functioning. Introducing stimulants to someone with ADHD can actually help those with ADHD better manage their symptoms because they raise their brain functioning le activity level to a normal range. Stimulants also activate self-organizing mechanisms which focus attention and manage impulses, allowing greater control of behavior. A physician must prescribe the stimulant following special procedures so the drug does not get abused. There is a potential for addiction and abuse, so this should be taken into consideration. There are three categories of stimulants that have been found to be effective. The first category is methylphenidates, for example, Ritalin, Concerta, Metadate, and Focalin. These medications are commonly used to treat ADHD and narcolepsy. The second category is dextroamphetamines, such as dexedrine or Vyvanse, which are also used to treat ADHD or narcolepsy. The third category is amphetamines, such as Adderall. The most commonly prescribed medications are Adderall, Vyvanse, and Ritalin. There is no test to determine which medication will work best for you, so I would recommend starting with Ritalin. I will first prescribe you 10 milligrams since you're an adolescent. Take one in the morning and one at lunch. You, if needed, you can also take a mid-afternoon dose in order to complete your homework. Monitor how this is affecting you, and I will increase the dosage as needed with a maximum of 60 milligrams per day. If this is not effective for you, then we will try a different medication. You must be patient as we try different doses, doses and medications. The next medication I would try is Adderall. Adderall is a mixture of amphetamines that have long, a longer active period. This medication only requires one dosage per day between 5 to 60 milligrams. Again, we will try different dosages to determine which works best for you. Thanks for explaining all that. I think medication is the best option for me. I really just want to be able to focus in school. All right, well, here's your prescription. And come back in two weeks and we will determine the what the next steps are. Okay.